Anybody see that? I want you guys to take a minute and uh, think back to your childhood. Uh, for some of you, that's a little further back, but just <laughs> take the time. And, uh, how many of you had a role model growing up? Most of you did, right? How many of you consider yourself a role model? Good or bad? <laughs> well, most of you probably fit into the 87% of adults that are a mix, both good and bad. You might not realize it, but sometimes you're a bad role model. Um, did you know that the average American youth spends about 1,100 hours in school each year? Now, compare that to the 900 spent watching TV, and you can start to see where the problem is. Um, today I want to talk to you about three things associated with media violence. First, we're going to look at how you can be a role model for children. Second, we're going to look at some of the facts about media violence on television. And last, we're going to talk about how you can uh, how you can minimize the amount of violence that your children are exposed to. Not only your children, but um, just as a role model. So let's get started and take a look at how you're a role model. Um, the dictionary defines a role model as a person whose behavior or example or success can be emulated by others, especially younger people. Most children learn from incidental learning or on the fly, just whatever they see, you know, and you're doing. That's, that's how they mainly learn. It's important for you as a role model to set the example for children to emulate, as they learn by observing and interpreting and making meaning of what they see and what's going on around them all the time. And they will eventually judge what kind of role model you are based on how you behave, your relationships with others, how loving and caring you are, and how mean and selfish you are. And this information came from WebMD.com. So how much violence is actually displayed on TV? 61% of television programs contain some violence. Only 4% of those feature a theme that's um, anti-violence. 44% of the violent interactions on television Involve perpetrators who have some attractive qualities worthy of emulating. So now they're making the violence, you know, they're glorifying it basically. 43% of violent scenes involve humor, either directed at the violence or used by characters involved with violence. So they're making it funny as well. Nearly 75% of violent scenes on television feature no immediate punishment for or condemnation of violence. So they're getting away with it. And 40% of programs feature bad characters who are never or rarely punished for their aggressive actions. And this came from the Surgeon General's report on youth violence. Now, there's some there's some uh, steps you can take as role models to, uh, like I said, minimize the amount of violence that they're exposed to. Preview what they watch before they watch it. Websites, movie reviews, watch it for yourself. And there's a list of three of the sites that you can go to. Um, limit the amount of time your children spend watching TV, playing video games, or surfing the internet. How? 
stay. I want to encourage you to play sports, music lessons, church activities, family vacations, anything to just keep them out of the house and keep them in because that's less time they're going to be exposed to want to watch the TV or you know, play video games or anything like that. And the biggest thing that you can do as a role model is to set the example and to be a positive influence. And this is a list of the top ten most violent TV shows today. It's coming from CNN.com. And now that we know how much violence is shown on television and how it affects your children, each of you should be thinking about how you can be a role model for the children. I want you to think back to the beginning of my speech when I asked who was a role model. The answer is every one of you out there is a role model. It's up to you to decide if you're going to 